And finally, we're at my current job. Which is not too much to say, really. Not any stories yet. I've only been working for like a few weeks. Um, it's cool because it's completely overnight. And that's the type of schedule I like to function at. Um, there's three there's three shifts. They call it first shift, second shift, and third shift. And I'm on third shift, which is from 11 to 7, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. So it's kind of a cool time to work. Uh, I never worked in a hotel, and it, you know, it has all these, you know, like the hotel beats. There's all sorts of like traditions, and you know, you, you're checking people in. Oh, I'm working, night audit is, you know, I work at the front desk, but I also uh, do all this computer shit, like to uh, like um, computer stuff. There you go, numbers and computers and processes, just lists of process. But anyways, there's all these kind of like you know things you do, the beats of working a hotel service. You know, people are staying. They're sleeping where you're at. They're asking for hot breakfast. Um, so I start the night with saying good evening to people as they come in through the door. And sometimes they want like a food order or uh, a beer or something like that because we have like a bar. <laughs> it's funny, this job is, involves a lot of things. There's a coffee machine, there's a, a bar, there's a kind of like candies and other to-go stuff that you serve. And if people, there's also this 24-7 menu, so, uh, so if somebody wants something off this menu, like, there's, like, pizza and, like, sandwiches and cheese plates and shit like that, you have to make it right there, and you have to, like, leave and go in the kitchen and make this stuff. <laughs> it's kind of silly. Um, so I start with saying good evening, and then I work all overnight until people are coming out for breakfast, and I say good morning. I kind of like that process. It's kind of like, I feel special like holding the fort or something like that. Um, I work with a lot of girls. Or, no, I, oh, I work, you know, alone pretty much, except me and the security guard. But the girls who come in, like, there's like a little bit of overlap. So, uh, I get to see them a little bit, which is nice. Um... Yeah, there's nothing really else to say about that job. It's working well so far, but I assume I'll quit at some point. So that's a lot of jobs. I, I should count. I think it's near 20 or something like that. But uh, I like to give like a little bit of a synopsis. I, uh, I plan in my future to own my own business. Uh, I want to have a software company. And uh, I want to have my kind of entertainment space. That's my uh, current plan. Entertainment space is Necoplex. And uh, I plan to start that as an event and continue it as a, a place of business. So basically it's like game stuff and inter other live entertainment and uh, in in-person entertainment. So I've learned a lot of things. I've noticed it's almost like everything I've worked seems to make sense to for my future if this is what I plan to do. I, uh, I've, I've always felt really triggered about how you treat employees. So I try to learn every single job I've had, I've tried to really think from both perspectives, from the management to the employer, and to employee, oops. <clears throat> and uh, there's so many things, there's so many aspects to it. There's people take for granted how much is involved because these are these are human experiences you know there's people have different feelings people react to things in all sorts of different ways they and and yet you need to work with that in so many different ways you have to be extremely flexible and sensitive to these people um, and that's not gonna work for everybody so there are kinda two pitfalls that I want to talk about um, and I literally just forgot them when I just mentioned that. Um, but basically, with management, you have to, I think, uh, two, two of the main things is, uh, 
how to go about strictness. I'm definitely pro strictness, even though it may not seem like it. But it's what you're being strict about. I, if it's strict about uh, what I view as something like negative instead of positive, then it's bad. <laughs> Sounds kind of generic and weird. Um, a great example is that drawing thing at the place. They're being strict about me not drawing. Their intention maybe was like he should be working, but uh, my objective was to maintain sanity. And they didn't really have a solution for me. They just told me not to do something, and they didn't really give me an alternative. So that's like strictness for a negative purpose. They're just they don't have a okay this is another thing is that you need as a management you need solutions and solutions come with compromise uh, you have to take in what available resources you have and and with the conditions that are going on and run a course of action that best uh, accomplish uh, best re resolves that and that's it can be dirty situations it can be it can be tough. You know, there's not always one way to do something. But the fact is you have to be flexible and you have to be kind of creative to be able to resolve these types of things. Um, so the simultaneous strictness, lack of strictness, they're strict on stupid shit, uh, but not strict on like things they need to be, like quality. There's never any strictness about quality, it seems. That's something, that's the only thing I would be strict about, is maintaining a quality. The thing is, an, you don't have to psychologically manipulate an employee. You don't have to, like, nitpick, tell them how to do something. If they don't, if they're not in alignment with your objective, then there's no point for them working here. And that's where I would be more strict. Like, if people are obviously not aligned, and that's kind of like me with my jobs. I quit the job when I know it's out of alignment with my objective. Then you, then you don't work with them. It doesn't matter. You, you can't really shape a person. You can influence them a little bit, but you can't shape a person to be like in alignment with your objective. So you basically have to find the right people. People, and that's another thing. I think employers should be a lot more. They should the interview process should be different. For example, you know you can do lip service. You can. You can always talk to a person. And granted, I think interviews have that quality of you know you know you just need to see somebody in person to kind of get the impression about them to see if they're not like an absolute wacko, and that'll kind of be obvious, I guess, if you talk to them a little bit. But you really can't know if they're a good fit. I guess that's another reason why they have probation periods too. But I think an interview should be one of two things. One. Uh, interacting in a casual way like going out to maybe eat is kind of a rough one but the more interactive the better to actually understand the person on a personal le level and I wouldn't recommend this uh, this avenue as much as actually for the interview literally throw them into the job just and I know I know that it's you can't tell because they're not experienced enough but you can kind of get a feel, I think, much better than just a, a talking interview. To see how they interact, you know. Maybe not even doing a real job thing. Maybe some sort of different task. Because filling out paperwork in an interview is not what you probably will be doing in your job. And it won't be really relevant in how you do your job. So you need to put them in some sort of situation that will give you that garner more information. Let's see what other philosophies I've garnered from these experiences. <clears throat> you do have to be sensitive to people, but you know you don't have to go overboard or anything. Again, what I'm talking about with the alignment thing, you have to make compromises to your people, to the people that are committed to your purpose. But if they're not, then you don't have to make that compromise. Another thing <laughs> that reminds just reminds me of something that's a little bit different. Uh, you need to be able to not be ruled by your customers. You have to have your vision and stay true to your vision. You can't let every single little comment by people around you run run the show. 
be like, oh, this person complained about something, we have to totally adjust this thing and punish this employee for that thing. You have to be able to say no to customers. Be like, no, we're not going to do that way. Um, that's why I really liked that pizza place, because we were allowed to kick out people who were like bums or just treating us bad. We can like swear them off and get out. You have to be empowered as an employee to be able to do what you need to do. You can't be, the customer can't rule you. They're a client. It's, it's a con, just like, there's basically, it's a three-way contract. You're all inter intertwined. You have the, o the owner or manager, you have the employee, and you have the customer or client. We're gonna call them client. And it's this interrelationship. It has to be balanced and interacting. The client can't be the ultimate. They always say the customer is right. And granted, they're the one funding the, the endeavor. But they're funding it on their terms. They have you know their requirements. And not every single person's requirements are in alignment with your purpose. So you can't just cater to every single one. You need to cater to the ones that are aligned with you, straight up. So yeah, you need to listen to ones that are your loyal customers or people you really want to get along with. But you can't just succumb to everybody. And same with the employees. They have, you know, they're trading their service for money. These people are trading their money for service. And then the business owner you know, funded the thing originally or being funded to run it, to organize and coordinate this interaction. So it's a complex system that, you know, is very human and, and a little bit messy at times. But I feel like there's a lot of trends we've, we've kind of incurred that are incorrect or at least non-productive that we can improve a lot. And I hope that I can one day run my own organization and have it very harmonious very balanced. You have to have boundaries, but you also have to be flexible. It's, it's a tough situation. And what I find is that organizations that have a visionary and that still have that visionary very involved and very, you know, funneling out their energy, then that place is more successful. It's those places that have, have lost that soul, lost that, that original entrepreneur and uh, now they're a headless corporation that just is running on these old rules, these stale rules in this corporation that are trying to just get by. Everybody has their own personal incentives. They're just trying to get through the day. That's same with the day-to-day the -day employee. They're just trying to get through the day. And now you're not running a successful endeavor. It's just this, it's just these little bits that aren't really working very well instead of this thing that's gathered into one direction. So those are my thoughts. Hope you enjoyed this little video, or uh, the series of videos. And thanks for coming by. See you later.